So, uh, Barbara Evans, Seattle Wine Gal, thanks for having me, uh, or thanks for letting me interview you today. Uh, looking forward to chatting with you. Hey, Josh, how are you? I'm doing good. So, uh, tell the world quickly when you started Seattle Wine Gal and why. Ah, people are often quite surprised by when I started. I started about the same time as you. Um, when did I first see you online? Five months, six months ago? Yeah, I think it was November. I think it was November. Okay, so I started around then. Um, I saw Rick Backus. I saw you were interviewing him, and that he was—he looked shocked to find out that you were only on for that long. Well, me too. I think um, what happened was I got on and started tweeting about wine and blogging a little bit about it. Um, not really trying to create a Seattle Wine Gal as anything other than just my fun um, at-home project after work, de-stressing, um, which is a, a lot of people get into blogging that way. Uh, but then I found you and connected with some other big, what I would call, wine powerhouses in this um, state and now in this country, and uh, it just kind of got a little out of control. So I do it for fun, um, and it actually brought me to the point where I am now where I have my own business. Well, we'll talk about that in a second, but uh, let's do something here. You call yourself Seattle Wine Gal, so let's see what kind of wine experience you actually happen to have. I mean, people wonder... Does this chick really know about wine? So let's see. Let's, let me ask you some simple questions. So where does Bordeaux wine come from? Uh, that is from Burgundy, France. Bur oh, really? Okay. Um, all right. Um, so why does some wine taste or smell like vanilla or chocolate? Um, probably because those ones are um, aged in a steel... Steel barrel? <laughs> Psych, you're pulling your leg. She knows her shit. She knows what she's talking about. Uh, <laughs> uh, did I keep a straight face? <laughs> I know. Yeah, you were, you were doing a good time keeping a straight face. So. Those were good answers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, completely opposite from uh, from what they would actually be. So, um, no, uh, so tell us really a little bit about your um, your background in wine. Uh, years in the industry, and basically I was just pouring wine at local wine bars, putting myself through college, um, and I was getting a, a master's in social anthropology, trying to figure out desperately how I could put together my love of social interaction, anthropology, and business with with my love of wine. Now, that was before social media came along, and when I started to see what people in the wine industry were doing with social media, it just hit me. I mean, this is this is right. This is what I love to do. Um, so, and the social anthropology goes perfectly with with um, with social media and interactions online. Cool. Um, so, do you you don't consider yourself like a wine reviewer or a wine blogger, do you? Uh, no, that's a really great question. Actually, um, a lot of people would say that I'm a, a wine reviewer and a wine blogger. I'm I'm more of a wine tweeter, and I love doing videos, um, text blogging. I, I enjoy it. Uh, it's it's a little bit more of a chore for, chore for me. And I kind of feel like go with whatever platform feels good for you. I mean, within social media or just your own, you know, personal. If you're going to go home and do something to relax, do something you love. So mostly I'm a tweeter. Um, I don't review wines, but I do love to get an energy and buzz out um, when it comes to sharing new wines with, with all of my followers. So sometimes people send me wine and I go to events. Um, now I don't do a typical review, but I do get excited and generate a little bit of a buzz about new wineries and where to go in, in Woodenville. Cool. So. so now that you've established this uh, Seattle Wine Gal brand, um, where do you go from here? What do you, you mentioned earlier you're, you're making money at it, which people I'm sure would be really shocked to hear. Um, so tell us a little bit about what you're, how you're using that brand and what it's become. Okay, I'll give you the secret inside scoop on this. Uh, what happened was people, um, CEOs of, of corporations and such, cross-national, were following me because of their interest in wine. Um, but a few of them thought to themselves, well, if she can do this with her own self, you know, as a personal brander, maybe she can do this for my company. So I was contacted by quite a few people, and I'm still being contacted all the time, that really aren't both in the industry, in the wine industry, and, and not in the wine industry. And so I've been taking up projects. Um, I have about four years of quote-unquote social media marketing, online marketing experience, um, and I've worked for big corporations and I have a good understanding of, of search engine optimization and um, return on investment measurement. And so that's all important when you're working for a big 
company. So I'm not going to sit here and say every wine tweeter can can get big corporate gigs, um, but if you really hit the grindstone and learn your shit, ooh, sorry, <laughs> then, you can, then you can see that Sociata wine go. <laughs> So that's how that's how I make my money. Um, so it's not really directly through Seattle Wine Gale. Seattle Wine Gale is still just my fun project, but it's a really great great way of showing prospective clients um, what my capabilities are within the within the social media space. Cool. So um, let's talk social media strategy just for a second. When you sit down with a winery for the first time, because you have a love and you have a passion for these wineries in the Woodenville area. Uh, and, and around Seattle area, what are, what are some of the first things that you tell them, or how do you explain social media to them? Um, uh, the first most important thing that I explain to people that unfortunately I don't hear a lot of other uh, social media types talking about is the importance of personality. Um, no matter what platform, and when I say platform I mean Twitter, Facebook, blogging, vlogging, whatever, whatever platform feels right for you, Go for it, but make sure you're yourself. Um, so I really harp on personality, sense of humor, um, dropping the product, pushing. Um, even in a self-branding campaign, you know, I know um, MBAs that know online marketing way better than I ever will, and their personality is zilch online. And so they've got they generate no energy. Um, so no matter what, and I mean the second thing is choosing the right platform. You don't have to have them all. You do. High five. <laughs> but, but, it's, but it's tough to do. It's really tough to maintain. And I'm finding that in my own campaign. You know, I'm sticking with what feels really good to me because I have the energy and the stamina and the happiness and the joy from it every single day. Same goes true for wineries or small companies getting into it. If you don't like tweeting, don't. If you love Facebook, do it. If you love being on video, then don't have a text blog. Have a YouTube channel. I mean, all these things, if you really want to get higher up and do it with SEO and such, you really should interlink all these um, platforms, but you know I think it's just too daunting, especially for for small wineries. So does that answer your question? It does. Yeah, it does. It totally answers the question. Personality. Pick what works for you. Uh, some great advice. Cool. All right. Well, let's see. Let's end with this. Let's tell us one thing people would be surprised to know about Seattle Wine Gal, other than that you like to uh, drink in the shower in the morning. Uh, what's something that people would be surprised to know about Seattle? Well, that happened once, and now it's tagged me. Now it's tagged me as as the biggest alcoholic in the community. I know. Okay, uh, okay. I'll give you that. I know. I know you're legit, and that was all in funds. But tell us one uh, thing people would be surprised to know about you. Well, given that I'm such a foodie and a, a wine drinker, and I'm lazy as hell, people are surprised that um, I'm an, a competitive athlete, an ultra ultra runner. Um, I do. So many different sports, it's ridiculous, but um, basically I was up to, before my injury, 120 miles of running each week and running 100-mile races and 50-mile races and winning first place at a lot of them. Um, so I'm injured right now, but that's something that people would be really surprised is the, the ability to combine competitive athleticism with so much drinking, eating, and sleeping. <laughs> Yeah, wow, that, that is pretty impressive, and I know that it probably uh, what you're doing now stems from that same drive. I mean, it takes a lot of drive and energy and motivation to uh, be an ultra marathoner, um, so all of that's carried over into Seattle Wine Gal. So, hey, I want to thank you for your time. I know you're busy. Uh, you got probably some events to get to tonight. Um, so we'll see if we can work out some of this pixelation stuff, and I look forward to seeing you in just a few short weeks. And enjoy uh, Scottsdale when you're down there. Okay. Thanks, Josh. You know, watching these that are pix when they're pixelated is fun. Anyhow, I watch I watch all the ones that you do, and and, and we'll we'll figure out a system to sure. fix it. But. All right. Cool. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. Hey, that's.